Hey guys and welcome back. So, like I promised, this is the Phantom expansion of the Dark Souls board game. So we're gonna review all the miniature that comes in it to see if they are of interest to you guys for the hobby. Are they worth buying just to paint? Or are they worth buying to paint and play the board game? We will see. So the first thing we'll do, we'll open this box. And that's pretty much, uh, pretty much learning those miniatures at the same time as you guys. Just like the previous one with the character expansion, I never opened that box before and didn't look at anything. It's just because I got them basically for free. So I was curious to look at them because I really love Dark Souls. I'm a big fan and I hope actually to paint a few of them. So let's start this. So what do we got here? We got the booklet. Just explaining a few things, I guess. A few invaders, a few cards, a few stuff. Yeah, this is done. I'll just put that say there. There we go. What do we have here? Oh, I don't need. Last time they were taped to the side. Like this. this one is taped. And that side is taped. Oh. This time the front is taped. That one's taped, that one's taped. State. I'm pretty sure I'm just lacking the one in the back. Come on. There we go. Hmm. There. Sorry about that making a lot of noise uh, they really made sure on that expansion they really made sure that nothing was moving nothing so all right so let's start this all right i have to start with solera right so this is the expansion pack of all the ghosts and the invaders of dark soul and i forgot to tell you in the first expansion that I covered, the one for the characters, uh, we got, of course, the original playable characters, and we got a few of the set of armors. But those armors are not specific just to Dark Souls 1, 2, or 3. They're a bit of a mix of all of them. So we got, like here, we got Solaire of the first game, but at the same time... Is that him? No, that's the wrong one. Wait, 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 wait. Where is he? Where is he? He is... Oh. So we got Egon. He's the knight that protects the fire keeper in Dark Soul 3. I don't know if you remember Egon from... Uh, Egon of Karim. Karim? Karim. Karim? I think it's Karim. So yeah, Egon was defending that lady. So he was in Dark Soul 3, and we got Solaire here that is dirty. Let's try to clean our poor Solaire. I don't know why he's dirty like that. So we got Solaire, and he's gonna be the first one we will cover in this little review. So I'll open back the light again. There we go. So we got Solaire. I am not impressed. To be honest with you guys, really not impressed. The details are really, really light. Not, there is no depth to it. It's not deep. It's really just like little bumps on top of it. Even the sun symbol is extremely difficult to see. 
can barely see him. So I'm trying to see if there's a way I can actually like make it more visible, but do you see it now? It is barely there. Really hard to see. So that's gonna be so hard to paint. So our beautiful Solaire, yes, of course he got this the, the traditional praise the sun position, but he's not a great model. Sadly, I hope they would have invest a bit more in the details, but they didn't invest in Solaire at all. And it's really sad. Even the helmet, the helmet seems bland. Just a bit of detail and not that much. So yeah, that was Solaire. Kind of sad. Ah, oh, that's sad too. We got our sword master from Dark Soul Tree, the one that's standing on the left side of the fire shrine. Well, look at his sword, all crooked. Hmm, that's sad. He's not that bad though. I can easily paint him, paint the skin. Here we got a little. Not sure what that's supposed to be, a little bump in the leg. It's more like a defect in the plastic itself. So yeah, again, not to impress. Uh, the sword is fused with his elbow. So I guess they try to stabilize the sword by fusing both of them together, but didn't work the only thing it does is bend the sword the other way around uh, beside that not much it's just a drape of course is the sword master so he's nearly naked we got the holster for his um, sword or katana to the side and he's standing on a rock so that's kind of cool that he's standing on a rock though but yeah i'll need to try to fix that so not too happy about this one. So we'll move to the next one. So we got the rune Aphis. Looking at him. Looks a bit better than the others, to be honest. We got the fur, uh, easily spotable. We got those, that pouch in the front those weird scissors standing in the middle or well clips uh, again another pouch to the side right here but beside that he's not that great when I'm looking at the hand I don't know if you, you can actually see it the hand is not that great the details of the hand are really jumbled up and we got that mold line that just crossed the whole thing. So, again, I'm not too impressed of this expansion um, up until now. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, we got that, that bat that is strapped, strapped to the stick. So, yeah, that could be cool to work on. But right now, I'm not that amazed. Really not. So, if I remember, this is... Uh, of Mirab, of Mirab, look, look at you, look at you, look at you, look at you. Not sure how you pronounce his name actually. I'll have to play again. If I remember, he's in, he's in Dark Soul Two now, or Dark Soul Three. Oh God, it's been a while I didn't play, so I'm having a hard time. So the guy got actually. Oh, can we see his face? face is not really visible so you got no detail for his face whatsoever we got something of a nose and we got his beard so that's pretty much it of the face or that face mask uh, we got the long hair in the back shoulder pads uh, beside that the robe itself it's kind of plain uh, 
this is so weird. The sword is not in the holster. So we got a holster, but no sword whatsoever. So yeah, kind of weird. Eh, meh. It's an okay design. Kind of cool, but I don't know. Something's missing. So I'm not too happy there. So we got a Horus the Hush. And I'm kind of sad because we got Horus, but we don't have Henry. And I know the thing would have been, is Henry a guy or a girl? Because depending if the sex you're playing, uh, Henry is always the opposite of you. So if you're playing a girl, Henry is going to be a man. If you're playing a man, Henry is going to be a woman. But anyways, so they put in Horus. And actually, I would have preferred Henry, but at a same time I think the model for Henry is in the base game so I'll need to check it out it's for the, the main player character so that's Horus so Horus was pretty basic but Horus if I remember was playing with the double-handed weapon and I'm kind of sad there is nothing with him there seems the, most of the ghosts seems to be lacking weapon with them well, not most, but at least half of them. So it's kind of weird compared to the red, the invaders, the red ghosts. They're all full of weapon. They're, I'm pretty sure the white ones are not going to be my favorite and the red ones are going to be better. But right now, yeah, we got Auris. It's basically just a character standing around, not doing much. Uh, being silent, you know. So nothing too special about him. Big sword of armor, no weapon, no shield. He got his helmet, and that's it. And a small cape in the back. No, nope, not interested. Sorry, Oris. You're a cool character, I kind of like you. So we got Sigward of Katarina and his bended weapon. Again, another bended one. So, basically the same model as the one in the... Um, character expansion but I realized something and that is telling me something the details on this one are less deep and they're not as good looking as the one in the character expansion so I believe the ghost one has either been rushed or they changed the method of printing because this is not the same model as the one in the expansion. The helmet grill is really, really smaller. So that's going to be hard to be able to put some detail on it. You can do a bit of highlight, but the ridges are kind of small and they're not pointy. They're actually kind of round and flat. So that's not great for when you're brushing with your paint. But... They made the armor, the uh, buckler, with a, a stick in front of it, compared to the smaller little, like, spike. But, yeah. In general, it's still a cool model. But what I'm wondering is, when I'm going to paint, is he going to be a pain in the ass? And I believe he will. Those ridges are not that great for painting. So up to now, what I can tell you, is that the white ghosts are not great for the hobby itself. So we got the cell sword Luet. And he's kind of really cool with the both shield as weapon. Um, the ridge for the shield are pretty deep, so that's not bad. The armor got barely any ridges on it. So it's extremely difficult right now, even for me, to look at it. So even on the camera, you barely see it. For me, I barely see it too. So that's not great. It's not going to be fun to paint and it's going to be actually really hard. But when you look at the back, the bottom of this coat of armor got deeper ridge. If the ridge in the front would be that deep, I believe we could have done something. We can always do something. Okay. You can always paint it. The only thing is, are you giving yourself more trouble? Are you really getting out of your way 
to buy a box of minis that are not made for the hobby to just paint it for the fun of it so right now what I'm saying is I do not believe this expansion is really matching what a hobbyist like some well somebody that loves that uh, the hobby of painting would enjoy and it's kind of sad because the Dark Souls um, miniatures and characters are really really nice really really cool so we got the Rogue Witch uh, Bellatrix? No. What is her name? Beatrice? Rogue Witch Beatrice. Yeah, Rogue Witch Beatrice. It's more basic model. She's just a sorcerer. Uh, she got her wand over the long stick. The shield is broken. That is kind of pretty cool for a model. Uh, the robe is so so the base is really good when the more up you go the less the details appear and same thing for the little cape the little hat the sorcerer's hat is really nice too and we got a really tiny tiny face it's even smaller than the one the expansion of the characters so the more i look at them the more I realize doors are made for you to put a base coat and dry brush, nearly the whole thing. That's the only way you'll be able to do a little something and really dry brush with just a minimum of paint to be able to achieve something because it's way too small and not enough detail. You can have stuff that are really small, just like the second edition Terminators that are really small. But you got place to work, you got big round shapes, really deep design, so it's really nice when you get them. But for now, it's not that great. So we got Cirrus that is standing in the uh, fire shrine in Dark Soul Tree. And she looks pretty cool there is some kind of division near the end it's really hard to see but yeah she's cool she's got um, some mesh under her coat it looks great uh, that's not bad detail on the side on the side of her legs are not that great they don't show up really so those are gonna disappear with the first layer of paint uh, the mesh in the back is not that bad. We can actually do something. The arms are really, really tiny. Um, the hands are not bad. And her face is... Barely visible. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how good... It's, it, it would have been a really tough model to do. Uh, her main thing is really white. A bit of silver, a bit of grey. And she's really like colorful, like a colorful, like a really glowing white character. So she's going to be hard to do because it's hard to pop any details on something that is all white, right? Without putting a bit of black or really a darker gray. So you don't have to, you can't put really too much of it without destroying the model. So for now, for the white ghost. I'm not impressed, really not impressed. Uh, we'll go back to Egon, and Egon got a nice shield, armor. The mace itself is pretty cool. Those are supposed to be dragon faces in the middle. Don't know if you can see that, but they don't look like dragon to me. Looks like more like bird beaks. So if he, if they would have not double the size, let's say a 15%, 10% more bigger miniature, I believe they could have really get something great. But right now, it's lacking. But Egon is not that bad. Egon is actually a manageable character. It's going to be hard to get really the details. And what I believe is you're going to start painting it and you're gonna lose details not because they're not there you're gonna put some paint and you'll be it's impossible for me to put
put a little dot of paint to do the eye of a stat, like of the small dragon on the mace. It's impossible. It's too small. And nobody's going to see it. Even from two feet away, you need to hold it in your hand and look at it really, really close. So we'll do quickly uh, the invader. So maybe the invader is going to be great. So we'll start with... Uh, which one are we going to start with? That's supposed to be... Oh, wow. Okay. So this is a Brillax. It's an invader. But... Uh, no, that's not a whip, that's supposed to be uh, some kind of broadsword, but it is completely bent. So again, really sad to see that. Um, the all around of it, it's not that bad. Actually, good recess, good deepness. Uh, the armor ridge are good too. The pants are fine. And on the ends, as you can see, long large surfaces that are straight so it's really easy to paint so it's going to be really easy to paint but you need to to solve that sword problem it is ridiculous so yeah he was a cool model the only thing is solving this but beside that he's one of the pointy at so so it was kind of cool but kind of sad that this happened to him so the next one will be Kirk. This is a guy that rolls around and hurts you when you're playing. And he's pretty neat. Pretty, pretty neat. If I remember, his character is basically black with a bit of silver here and there. So that's so bad. You could actually play a bit of, with a bit of color like, and put a bit of silver like wear and tear because basically all the spikes are hurting you. So he rolls a lot around just to evade and hurt his opponent. All the details are fine, a lot of spikes on the boots. Uh, we got a sword with the spikes, the same thing, same thing with buckler. So it, he's a really cool model. Um, it's kind of neat when I think about it. If you want to keep some of them as actually invaders, red invaders, and you don't want to break it, you could actually do a, a red base and after that, use the wash, the Blood Angel wash from Citadel, and to wash it to give it that dark, like weird, half transparent color. So it makes a, a really beautiful red with a lot of darkness inside of it, like if the black is bleeding through it. So that'd be something pretty cool. So we got the armored Denis, or Denis. Not sure how we call him, and it's usually what my character looks like when I'm playing Dark Soul Tree. By the time I reach the uh, the forest, so it's kind of hilarious to see a ghost dress exactly like my character usually. Um, decent, basic, good recess for the coat. You can really see the deepness of them. So that's nice. They, they were not scared to do them. They actually really carved them up. Uh, same for the top of his shirt. Beautiful belt. The shield is wonderful. That's going to be really nice to cover up. So easy to make like a silver in the back and either a green for that plant or a gold. Uh, the recess are deep enough. So that's going to be cool to make. Uh, beside that, the face is not bad. The eyes are really, really deep. Oop, oop. Eyes really deep. Nose is there. So we actually, we got something. The mouth is pretty tiny, but yeah, we got something. Actually, it's one of the best model for me in the in the kit so far to represent a, a character from Dark Soul and believing in ways that if you paint it, it's going to look like a character of Dark Soul and not just a big bulge of paint. Uh, we'll do the Fencer. I don't remember her name, but I remember it's a fencer. Uh, there she is. Long blade like a saber. Not a saber, but a katana or something like that. Uh, she's on high heel, actually. That's kind of cool. Uh, that looks like the... Um, I try to remember the name of the uh, red robe in the character expansion pack. But anyways. 
So our, our character is not so bad. The mount is still pretty tiny, but well, the face is pretty tiny. We got a bit of the nose showing up, not that much. Um, beside that, I have a hard time. See, I don't see any pouch or any like anything else. So it's basically just. Yeah, that's pretty much that's it. She got a shirt and some kind of dress. She got long stocking, or that's actually her boot that starts from the bottom and goes up there. And that's it. The one with the uh, the saber or the uh, katana. Hmm. It's it's decent. I'm pretty sure you can do something. Actually, bring it to look like a real Dark Soul character easily. But the details on the on the skirt is not bad, but some places are really really thin, so <sighs> I'm not sure about that one. Now I'll be honest, that one I think fits with the white one. So who do we got here? I think that's Leroy. Is it Leroy? Yeah, that's Leroy. Yep. That's another of the invaders. Um, a bit of mail at the bottom. Got a long coat. Some kind of quiver for the daggers, I believe. Throwing daggers. We got the chill that is completely flat to the body, so pretty easy. You don't need to paint behind it. We got a harm. We got that pauldron on this side and that side. That got Enough detail to the high rise. We got a maze that is big. Actually not connected to the body. Pretty impressive. And we got the helmet. And of course the helmet is... Oh, oh. The helmet got a small slot for the eyes. But I do not believe we will see it once it's painted. So again, not too sure for the helmet. I'm kind of scared that the face just look like a big bulge of paint. In the middle of it at the end but yeah we'll see so we'll do next Xentu? Xentus? Xento? I don't remember his name properly so he got his whip in his hand it's already rolled would have been cool to have the whip actually extended but yeah he's still a pretty big model right now uh, good details on the back same thing for all the details at the bottom of his uh, skirt or the robe. Not too sure you want to call that. Um, yeah, good details. So that's not bad. Same thing, and of course the whole headgear is deep and really well done. So that's kind of cool. So that's really nice. So again, I'm pretty sure that's going to be like some kind of white with a yellow shade. Or some rave bone, like anything to make like an old type of bandage or something that's really just gathered over the year, and just bit of put a bit of uh, black here and there to darken it, darken it here and there. Yeah, so that's a cool model. Actually, it's one of the most well done of the box. Can I actually focus? I'm having so much problem focusing today. There we go. So yeah, really cool model. Well done. That's the butcher. So that's Mildred, the man heater. Uh, Mildred is basically naked. She just got a little drape in the front and the back, more like a diaper type of stuff. And just, I'm not even sure if we can classify that as a bra, but yeah, and she got that bag over her head. So, yeah, not much detail to add to her, so it's pretty easy. Got that wooden plank in the back and the beautiful long butcher knife on top. So, really easy to paint. So, that one is a successful one, pretty sure. Really easy to do. Just need to trim those mold line, And that's it. And she's good to go. So, Mildred... 
pretty much worth it. Uh, what we got here? Is that... Oh, that's the Butcher, actually. That's Melinda the Butcher. Yeah. Yeah. So, Melinda, same thing. Not dressed too much. She just got a little drape that covers uh, the bottom. Uh, same thing, just a strap over her breast. And beside that, the body is completely naked. So not too much detail, really easy to do. Good deepness in all the those folding uh, in the material. She got that, that kind of scarf that goes around her neck that just bend, um, that floats in the back. Really easy to do. Uh, we got a beautiful axe, enough detail. I'm not sure if those details are gonna show in the painting. Some of them are deep, but most of them are really, really light on that axe. And it's really sad because it looks amazing. It's really, really cool. And I love those scratches of bones. Because she used it to cut it, to cut some meat and it just starting to dull the blade, right? So just the sheer weight and strength of this weapon cuts the bone off. So really cool model. Another one really well done. And this is Marvelous Chester. Um, not so bad. Crossbow. Good looking coat. He's holding something in his hand, but I'm not sure what it is. So it looks like a dagger. Oh, looks like it's some kind of dagger. So yeah, like I'm telling you, there are some details that are not too obvious. But anyway, so the coat is really well done. A lot of detail. Uh, the crossbow, really cool, well done. There's a bit of design to the side, deep enough to do a highlight on it, so it's really cool. Same thing with his pants. Uh, all the detail shows up carefully. There's got some kind of um, connection for his shirt under. They're not buttoned. They look like belts more than anything else. Deep enough to do some details. And the face looks decent enough to actually do something and it's actually a good looking face because the mouth is open because it's laughing or smiling so it makes it really easy to shade it up and make it pop on the table so another one really well done um now who is that i remember um I don't remember his first name. I know it's the Collector. Um, I think it's Oliver the Collector. So Oliver the Collector just walks around and attack you with all type of weapons. So beautiful helmet. Really well done. Good detail to it. Uh, pauldron. Well done. All this armor kit with the skirt is perfect. Really well done too. Uh, even the weapon is made like out of rock. Oops. It's made out of rock and really easy to see right now. So good detail on it. And we got that face where the spear is actually traversing. We got a bit of detail. It can be scary to lose some of it. It's really not. It's really surprising because that face is so big. You, you would figure that there is actually a lot more going on but it's barely visible so yeah that's gonna be more hard so it, it's a beautiful model really well done easy to work on but that little head on the spear can be a bit tricky so cool cool one for the collectors get all over the collector so now we got maldron the assassin so maldron uses spear Spear seems pretty straight, so that's not bad. Uh, armor piece, helmet, decent. Uh, the details for... Yeah, yeah, it's okay. The arms, I'm not sure. Uh, the details are not that deep. Can be really hard to highlight that. But the shield is pretty nice. The shield actually got pretty well divided details and easy to highlight. And I love, again, all those scratches, like the wear and tear from the shield. So that's pretty cool. That's another one that I feel that is pretty nice. 
you could do something with this one. It's going to be harder than uh, Mildred and the others and the Man Eater, but yeah, I'm. I think you can do something with this one. So it's pretty cool. So I'm pretty sure I covered the whole thing. So we got how many characters we got in this one? Let's say we got four, five, six, six again. Oh, that's five actually. Right, eleven. We got five, five. So we got twenty-one miniature for the uh, expansion Wait. for the ghost. So I'm just gonna close that quickly. So, yeah. So for the Phantom expansion, we got 21 miniature compared to the, uh, I think that was 16 for the character expansion. So, are they worth it? It is up to you. For me, I do not believe this, the Phantom expansion is worth it for somebody that paints and just collect them. There's only like maybe six of them out of the 21. That's one, one fourth of the whole thing that is actually interesting. And you could buy them separately online. But at the same time, look again at the price. If you can get a box like this instead of $60 or $70, and you can get it for 10 bucks, go for the 10 bucks, right? That'd be not so bad. You can actually do something. But I wouldn't pay full price for those. Uh, it is not worth it. Compared to the character expansion, that one, I believe, is actually a really neat expansion. And somebody that is interesting in getting some Dark Soul miniature, it is the same price as getting a brand new box of Warhammer uh, min minis. So this one, for me, is a big no-no. On the tabletop, for playing the board game itself, not for a collector, not for somebody that paints, it is really, really cool because you got so many uh, ghosts and invaders to cover in your, to help you out in the board game and really mix things up. It's really neat. It's really cool. But if you're looking for both elements at the same time, this doesn't answer it. So it's really sad because I was hoping to get that one with the same details as the one in the character expansion. And it is not the same. It is sadly, I think, this one is really less quality than the other ones. And in the character expansion, if I remember, there was only one or two that the weapons were kind of banded, but just a bit. In this one, I got two of them. In this one, I got two of them where the sword is completely banned. That's going to be horrible, horrific to bring back. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm not even sure if I can do it. Compared to the other one, I can actually let it slide. It's barely visible. Anyways, from afar, you won't see it. Those, they are obviously broken. Like, really bent. So, not too proud of that one. So, anyways. So, on this, this was my review for the Phantom Expansion. Uh, I think I got the Explorer and the Iron Key, I think, expansion. That I have still to check. But the thing is... Are they really worth it? They're more expansion, and the expansion you usually come with one or two boss, and maybe four to six uh, minis, like monsters, extra. So the, the character and the Phantom expansion were the one that was more of interest, because they got so many minis in them. But for 21 minis, for 50 bucks for this one, if it's not for the board game, and it's really more collecting, not worth it. If it's half and half, for the painter, you're going to be a bit deceived. Like, you're not going to be as happy as for the character expansion. And you'll feel you kind of lost a bit of money with those broken minis. But if you're good to modify them, I would say get a second-hand box to play with them instead of buying a brand new one. So on this, I hope you guys enjoy. And we'll see you in the next video.